Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please take your seats at this time as the program will begin momentarily. Hello and welcome everyone. Um, let me first introduce myself. My name is Gillian Saunders. I work at the Delft University of Technology and um, at the Center of uh, Education and Learning. And uh, I have been uh, one of the primary developers of uh, this module two, Let's Innovate Assessment, which is the second module. Um, today should be a short session. So uh, I'll stay and stay brief, which for those who know me know that that is a challenge, um, but I will attempt so. Um, this meeting is being recorded um, so that we can uh, make it available to those uh, who can't be here today. If you do not want to be recorded, please switch off your camera in view of uh, all the GDPR uh, regulations. Uh, with that, I'll uh, start uh, sharing my screen again. Okay, hopefully everyone can see that. So uh, welcome to the second session. I saw this morning that some of you had already started on the course and, and logged in and, and started working on it. Um, this is the second module. Uh, and uh, let me take you through the agenda for this short Q&A session. I'll briefly uh, explain how this module fits within the e-course uh, Let's Get Flipped, uh, how this particular module is structured, although we have a very common uh, buildup over all modules, there are some intricacies uh, in between the different ones. Um, again, this uh, module will also involve some group work, so I'll also try and explain that, and any more questions uh, we can always answer later on um, during the, 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 uh, the conversation. Um, and um, I'll also talk a little bit about the live talk show, which will be next Monday. Um, we broadcast live from TU Delft. So we're then uh, probably pushing the boundaries out of what we should try, but uh, we'll wait and see how that works. And of course, as this is a Q&A session, if there's any remaining questions, please, uh, uh, we'll take some time to answer those. If you have any questions in the meantime, please put them in the chat. Or uh, if something's unclear, uh, just stop me from talking uh, and uh, I'll try and answer them. So with that, uh, I'll now go to the, uh, the, the next slide. So uh, this is the second module of the e-course Let's Get Flipped. Um, many of you have already taken part in module one. If you're new to uh, the course, you're very welcome to module two, and I hope you'll enjoy it very much. This module will run over two weeks. Uh, and then there's sort of a week break in between that gives us the time to give you some feedback and you a time to recover uh, before we start to module three and uh, module four, which is uh, sort of has the same build. Again, the delivery will be in the three phases that you've also seen in module one. Prepare, which are mostly activities you do by yourself. Uh, then engage, which is where you start engaging with the fellow participants in the course, although our engagement is a slightly different uh, structure than in the previous course, and extend, which allows you to extend your knowledge even further. Um, hold on, I see more people in the waiting room, so I'll admit those two. Note to self, must switch that off for the talk show. Um, so uh, that is how uh, this will work. Um, the schedule of this module, so today uh, the module is open. Um, we were either nice or cruel, that depends on your perspective. We opened the course slightly earlier, so you could already get a head start. Um, this is our live session, uh, and it, by now also uh, Engage and Extend are open, meaning that you can binge on the content um, uh, that is uh, individually based. Um, perhaps not so much on the content that we're, which will require uh, group work. We have a live session next week, and then uh, the module ends by the 19th of September, which is a Sunday. Um, so uh, this module comes with some deadlines, uh, and I think it always helps in the planning if you know what your deadlines are. The quizzes for prepare will close on Friday, September 9th. The quizzes in the engage phase will close on Sunday, 11th of September. Now, please don't be afraid that these are small knowledge checks. They're not extended quizzes on whether or not you did all your homework and you've known everything. 
but that is when they close. And especially for those of you who are looking uh, to get an overall certificate or gain ECTS, as soon as we have that all clarified, then uh, this is what you can uh, start uh, looking at. The um, PA design, so the peer assessments designs, which is a submission in a Moodle workshop, uh, have to be in by Wednesday, the 14th of September, because uh, if not, it's very hard for you to peer assess something if it's uh, put in on the exact same day when the peer assessment is due. So the, uh, the peer evaluation part of the workshop uh, that's also happening in Google Workshop will, not, uh, will open after Wednesday or on the Wednesday, depending a little bit how, how the system works. Um, and that closes on Monday, the 19th of September. Um, next to uh, feedback from um, uh, your fellow peers, you'll also get some feedback for us. And depending, of course, on how many people submit and how complicated everything is, uh, you'll get your feedback no later than Friday, the 23rd. So that way, you know a little bit what you can and can't expect from, from our side of, of these things. I am not seeing any screens lighting up that people have questions, so I'm hoping it all goes well. Um, so the next part of it is group work explanation. So some of you will have, uh, uh, or most of you, I hope, actually, have uh, will have completed module one. And as such, uh, have already worked in groups. In task seven and eight in the engage phase, you'll be again working in groups. So you can choose. This is completely up to you because it's your course and your learning path and your learning journey and not mine. If you want to stay in your group and re-engage or whether you want to create a new group, um, both, uh, both is possible. Uh, we leave that all up to you. Um, and uh, so you either get, uh, enroll in a new group or you re-engage in your group, which you will also then have to uh, create again in uh, the group enroll tool. And once you have enrolled, we'll have, of course, made, uh, again, your own virtual space uh, available to you under Big Blue Button and discussion forum so you can actually cooperate and make full use of all, all the different tools. Um, my suggestion is, is that you do get on this early because... Um, you all have to also then uh, adjust your own planning and time so you can actually work together because uh, many of these things don't work as well as synchronous as uh, you may expect. Um, so that's roughly how the, the group work will work. Um, so what are the expectations compared to uh, uh, module one? Uh, in module one, uh, there were lots of comeback sessions in which you got intermediate feedback. This one is styled slightly different. It's more about you acquiring knowledge uh, and working together uh, because we expect you to have matured a little bit in the course and, and need less uh, 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 steering. Um, so uh, in, that, in that sense, uh, yeah. Um, the interactions are far more Friday discussion forums. If you have questions, we will be monitoring the, uh, the forum uh, multiple times a day, so you shouldn't have to wait very long for your questions. But um, it isn't the case, uh, as in the previous session, that there is an extra Q&A uh, session where we discuss progress and all that. Uh, this is the next step in, in maturing in your process, so we expect you to do a little bit more of that. Um, and the live sessions are very much there about interacting with experts and other people. So our talk show, uh, what we have done is we have invited several people who've worked with peer assessment who, or who are, hmm, how would I word this? I'm not sure if she would word this, who are suffering from peer assessments, which we have also asked one of our students to join us to give you their perspective on things they uh, like when a lecturer does it well and when a lecturer does it not so well. Um, so, uh, and there's lots of interactions with them on that intended. Um, but having said that, if you're stuck, if you need help, please find us via the discussion forums. Um, because uh, it doesn't mean that we're not there and we don't care. It's just that we've styled it slightly different. Um, finally, um, so the live talk show. 
we will also record the talk show. Oh, no idea why that went back. Um, it will be presented by my colleague Naomi Wells, uh, who is a regular webinar host uh, at TU Delft. She uh, from uh, from the start of the pandemic all the way till uh, uh, this this summer, she hosted a weekly webinar where all good practices of staff on online learning uh, were shared. Uh, I've uh, also uploaded one of her sessions in the uh, extend phase. And we have three guests. Uh, our first guest is uh, Algenie Kam. She uses comparative judgment in peer assessment. She'll tell you a little bit more about it. And there's a whole webinar for you to uh, uh, dive into if you find that really interested in the extend phase. My colleague, Jonathan Pasco, who will offer you the lecturer perspective on, on, uh, on PA. What is it like to use? Uh, what are his frustrations? What mistakes did he make? What, what things would he uh, never, ever do again? And what would he keep? And uh, also one of our students. And the nice thing about Manouk is that she's not only a master's student, but she also is one of our TAs in Delft. We supervise a lot of the design projects by uh, teaching assistants. So she uh, was able to see both sides of the coin. One, how she experiences as a student. And then when she was a TA, how hard is it to motivate students? Uh, and you'd think that for somebody that is in age much closer to students than we are, uh, or at least in my case, uh, it would be uh, easy. But she'll also have a few things uh, to share with so uh, I have to say she's a little bit nervous when I told her that there's all these lecturers who want to know everything about it. And I said, well, you'll be fine. Um, we will be using, uh, if uh, if I don't find any more gremlins, the Slido app to um, engage with you. Um, I will make sure I post more instructions and, and send out an additional email uh, when I have everything ready. And that allows you to also uh, vote on each other's questions. So there's a little bit more peer review in there, but it also means that questions you find really important because in such a talk show, we can have lots of questions. So that way we can um, uh, sort of make sure that the most popular questions get answered rather than whoever's first in Zoom or whoever scroll last in Zoom, depending uh, how the scrolling works. We hope that will work a little bit more efficient. Uh, and of course, I'll be there to uh, add any additional uh, questions that our panel may not uh, be able to answer. Um, so this talk show will last about an hour. If there's many other questions, we will, of course, uh, uh, save them and try and answer them in a, on the forum or make a Q&A list on the forum afterwards. Like this session, that session will also be recorded. If you can't make it, you miss all the questions. What we will try and do is have the Slido open much before uh, the Zoom session, uh, ideally my my objective is to have it open by this Friday so you can also submit your questions even if you can't attend the session and then hopefully you'll get them answered either by watching the session back or in the Q&A later on. Um, and then that brings me to uh, the last part. Um, we have 15 minutes left of these sessions. Are there any questions at this stage? Feel free to speak up or to uh, I'll stop sharing. Hopefully I can see more. If my chat seems to be empty. That doesn't happen. People don't have questions. I can't have been that clear. That or you all haven't started yet. You have, have a hand. Yeah. Oh, Julian. <laughs> Renke has a question. Uh, maybe I missed it, but... Uh... This is my, my first time in this course, so how to, to get a group? Uh, so that is explained. Uh, let me try, hold on, this is uh, share screen. I have, this, I have this, I anticipated the question, so if I've done it right, you should now be seeing the course. Yeah. Yeah, good. Uh, hold on, I just need to remove all your pictures somewhere else so I can scroll. And if I'll gently scroll down, I think is my, I better turn edit off before I make changes that I don't want to make. Um, if you go down to this part of the course here, you see the peer assessment design. And there is a discussion forum here where you can say, which, who would like to join my group on? And this is where you can find like-minded uh, people. Or if you want to 
push the boat out. And if you normally teach uh, engineering or medicine and you now want to know how to do peer assessment in languages, you can do that too. And nothing to tell, this is the unique opportunity to for cross-disciplinary cooperation. So you can make your call here. Um, then if you go to the next one, this is where you can enroll your groups. And you choose together or you can uh, send the help desk an email to say these five people should be in one group and they will help you with that. Because I am, um, I, I, I have to admit, I am probably only two to three hours ahead of you on Moodle. Because at Delphi use a different virtual learning environment, so I'm still discovering all the little intricacies of Moodle. And then here you find the whole assignment that you can discuss as a group and to help you. We have the group meeting rooms here, as well as the group forum. And, and now I'm going to probably bear with me. I'll try and look. We also have, uh, so those are the, the different places that you can uh, work together, uh, etc. So once you're in a group, you'll have your private discussion forum uh, as a group, if I'm correct. I'm looking at. Barbie, to confirm that I'm saying this correctly? Yes, yes. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, so so that, that's, that's how that works. Um, we hope you enjoy the course. Are there any, um, I'll stop sharing for a minute because then I have a better overview. Any other questions? Either raise your hand, speak up, put something in the chat. Yeah, maybe just to add for those that already um, uh, had uh, the first first module. So if you would like to estimate the time that you need for this design, I would say it is less time that needed for this um, task than the, the previous one, because you, um, especially if you know how to use BDP tool. But for the newcomers, I would say that um, for the group work you uh, for your own preparation and for the group work it's probably several hours so i mean three four hours it depends on on your uh, capability to you know engage with the, with some new stuff but for the for those that already um, uh, actually um, been participated in the first module and um, uh, um, uh, very much acquainted with it with the tool and that that's much easier but nevertheless i think that um we are, for this module we prepared much more visible schedule yes you see the big the big the big advantage if you use the work that you've already made in module one is that you don't have to redefine your course you have your course structure already there and if you start from scratch you will need some of the basics of a course structure to design a peer assessment, because if you don't know what course it is, which learning objectives you want to meet, how can you design assessment in the terms of uh, we want to, to have a perfectly uh, aligned, constructively aligned courses. So, so that this this is where uh, we encourage you to. Uh, that also means that if somebody can't make it and you want to join an existing group, Remke, that should also be possible, right? Because I can understand that in from a time perspective, that that can be a bit daunting. So uh, in that sense, that is also possible because not everyone will be able to make all um, uh, modules. Any further questions? Blazenka, have I missed anything or forgotten anything? Or no, thank you, Julian. You, you were very good in this introductory part. That's probably the reason that there is no further questions uh, because, um, yeah, uh, you explained uh, the time scale and also uh, the activities. Uh, because uh, what we learned from the from you, colleagues, participants from the first module, um, that we should uh, announce very clearly the, all the deadlines and also material and available and so on. So we try to prepare it uh, in a a little bit more structured way than the first module, even though uh, your feedback for the first module was really very good as well. So thank you, Gillian, and um, to Delph for taking care about this module number two. And um, 
all of you to continue learning and especially special welcome to newcomers because we, we need sometimes many times um, fresh perspective if there aren't any further questions or you don't want to ask them in, in, in this uh, uh, format, um, then I suggest uh, we'll close down the meeting. Please know that we will we are monitoring the forums. You can also send emails to the help desk or uh, we will try and answer them uh, as soon as we uh, can uh, with the anticipation oh, uh, that uh, uh, it will be uh, for most of them during the working day, same working day, the weekend will depend a little bit more on, on what else is going on in our lives, but we will try and keep an eye on it, especially coming towards deadline time. Enjoy the course and uh, hopefully see you in a week's time at our talk show. <laughs>